Okay, hi everyone, welcome back to the series. Today we're going to cover errors, which is probably, I would say, the one of the most unique things about Zig is error types. So what are errors? Errors are basically a type of enum. If you don't know what enums are, then I don't know what you're doing here. <laughs> but, so enums are basically a way of just, uh, naming variables and sorting them in, in a way. Um, so here I've created adding error or adding error, which is a type of error. Error is a type of enum. And I've called this integer overflow high, integer overflow low. That's basically what an error is. There are lots of standard errors in the standard library. Um, and they could be something like, I don't know, file not found or integer overflow or index out of range, anything like this. Um, all right, so when you create a function, what you can do is you can put an exclamation mark here. What an exclamation mark means is this function could return an error or it could return the type here. So it's either an error or it's a void. And what you can also do is you can specify the error type. So here I have add and I've specified it could return an adding error, enum, or it could return an i32. Uh, how this basically works is it creates something called a union. What a union is, is two variables kind of together that it could be one or it could be the other. So it's a special type called a union. We're not gonna get into unions in this. You just basically need to know that that's what you're returning. You're returning a union of an error and the type. So it could be an error or an i32 or an error or a void. Um, and basically, when you say you return something from a function, you have to do something if it's an error or not. Um, I'm going to give you a C++ example of how this works. <clears throat> so in C++, um, I've created here an enum called error. First we have no, like no error. Integer overflow, uh, index out of range, index not found. Stuff like this, just an example of what you could use. Um, and what we're going to do is we're simply going to add some numbers like before. So we're going to add uh, some numbers together. Um, what I might do, I'm just going to directly put this in. I don't like using it this way. So I'm going to say max int plus one, min int minus one. So I'm adding to max max int, which is just, you know, two million. Somewhere, what, what would this be? Sorry, it's like two two billion, I think. Is the max int. If you add one, it's going to integer overflow go back to zero or back to minus whatever the min, the min volume is. Um, it will just go to the min volume, min, the min value. So we basically have to check if this is happening or not. So I call run test this function here with the input, and then we get error int. So I've created a struct which is an error int, which is basically the same as union. Like we have the error and we have the int, but in Zig it works a bit differently because it's like this or that, whereas a struct is this and that. Um, and then we get from the function add, we return an error int. So it's either an int or it's an error. Uh, we just create it here, result, and then we have a thing, a long, long, just to store the, var the value. It's an integer, so we store it in a higher value as before a plus b. And then we test if it's higher than the max int. That means it's an overflow. We test that it's lower than that. It's an overflow backwards, like down. Then we return the error. So we set the error to integer overflow and return it. If not, then we say add value equals a plus b and then return the result. This is basically what Zig does with errors. Um, it's a bit more streamlined in Zig because you don't need to create a struct. It's basically inbuilt in the language. So here we say if, if the error is not none, meaning if it's an error, then we print error. This resulted in an error. Uh, so I'll just show you this code. So here we add error to max int plus one resulted in an integer overflow. Minus one, minus max int plus minus one resulted in an integer overflow. And then we do 10 plus 10, fine, no errors. This is basically how Zig does it. Um, it kind of... You don't actually need to use it, but it's good practice to use it. Uh, and some um, standard library functions actually require you to handle the the errors. 
I'll show you this code in Zig. So we just go run, uh, like before, I call it run test in that. But anyway, so we put in, so we have the max in to the top. Uh, and then it's exactly the same as that before. We have run, so constant result, result of the addition, equals A, equals add, A, a and B. Um, let me just go to that function. So here we have add, it takes in an, an I32, I32, and we adding error unioned with an I32. So this is either an error or it's an integer. Could be both, it, may, it can't be both, but it's one or the other, right? So we do exactly the same. We have a 10th variable, I64, which is a long, long. Uh, we add this, add this, and then we see if it's over the max variable. And if it is, we return directly. So it's like you in in the C++ version, we need to have a struct here. We need to say return result.error is struct, res, return the struct. Uh, in Zig, it's basically automatic because it's a union. So you're returning basically the, we're making the union the error instead of the integer. So we return an integer overflow high. Here I've kind of made it so it's high, so we know if it's high or low. Um, and then if it's low, then return low. Otherwise, you return A and B. All right. Then we have to check it. So the way to check it normally, let me show you something. So imagine we, uh, let me just comment out everything here. And then we just do this. So I just want to just get, I just don't want to see this error. I don't, I don't want to see it. I don't want to see it. So let's have a look what happens. Error union is discarded. So that means that it says, yeah, consider using try, catch, or if. This basically means the function could return an error and you're ignoring it. Why are you ignoring the error? Like, it, it, it could be an error. You check it. Check if it's an error. Like, it could... Like, imagine you... There, there are some functions in Zig where you open a file and then read from it. What happens if the file didn't open? You just... Oh, I, I don't care. I'm going to ignore it. You, you can't just ignore it. it. What if it didn't open? Like, you could be... It could, you know, crash the program. So Zig has these checks that if you are returning a function from an error, you can't just discard it. You have to do something with it. And the main way to do something with it... Uh, so you can use try, you can use catch, but uh, I'll explain try a little later. Uh, here we use if. So I'll just comment this out and uncomment this. So here we have a if structure, the if result. And what if result basically means is if this is not an error. That's what this is saying. If this is not an error then store the value in this variable value. If it is a var if it is an error, store the error in this variable. Store store it in value. Store it in error. So the reason we can't say error, for example, is because error is a type. Mm -hmm. Error type. You can't call it a type. It's like calling int equals you know, int int. You can't say int int in C++, for example. Uh, it's, a, it's a type. You can't say so error. Um, you could say something like, I don't know, found error or something like this. But just leave it as er. Uh. And then we basically process it. So like if we have an if and an else, We've processed, it, we've processed the if in some way. Um, you can make a switch statement as well with errors if you want. But here I'm just going to print it. Um, and then that's basically it. Um, this is how you deal with errors. Uh, there, is an, there is another way which I'll go through later. Well, the two other ways, two other main ways. For some reason I closed that. Okay, so we run this now. Let's see what it does. So add error, da da da, plus resulted in error dot integer overflow. Error integer overflow high, add error da, da, resulted in error to integer overflow low. But basically, it tells us when there's an error, and then otherwise, ten plus ten. It's basically the same as what I did in the C plus plus code, but it's built into the language. Uh, so I shouldn't shouldn't put main 
main shouldn't start with an error. <laughs> uh, the problem, the, you shouldn't really return an error from main because where's it going? Main can't really go anywhere. Unless you make main recursive, it can't go anywhere. Um, but you shouldn't make main return an error. All right. So every time you return an error from a function, you don't need to actually write the error type. You can also, uh, in theory, in theory, I could do this. I'm not sure if this would still run if I do that. Let's have a look. It does. Okay, it still runs. So you don't actually need to specify the error. But I think it's better to do that. So I'm going to specify adding error. Alright, so there is another keyword you could use. Um, what you can use is catch. So I'm going to comment this out quickly. Alright, you can use catch, which is in uh, other uh, languages. So it's a catch A. Let me see if this works. I should probably print something. Um, I think I'll just print the value. Um, print, uh, let's do this. Result. I'll just print the result with the new line. So let's run this. Okay, it ran. So here, what I've done is basically made the result. Um, what catch does is, I'll just comment this. I should actually add, let me just quickly add catch to my uh, catch isn't actually listed. Save and close. <clears throat> All right, so catch is a keyword that you use for errors. It's in other languages, obviously. What this does is, if this function returns an error, Set the default value to A. That's basically what this means. So when you use catch, it basically sets a default variable, a default value. Um, so it's like you try to add it. If it returns an error, make it A. That's basically what we're doing. So it's just a simple way, like to to have a default value if there's an error. Um, you can also do it with like other things, like if you um, say you want to say if you want to get some something from a from a uh, if you want to get something from a file and it says nothing, then you could default an empty string or I don't know something like this. That's a way to get a default value. The other thing you can use is try. The problem with try is it's kind of like imagine someone throws you a grenade, you say oh throw it to someone else. It's basically what try does. So what try will do try. And then remove the catch. So what try will do is it will basically return this from this function. So you'd actually have to put this a try like this. Because um, basically it makes, makes this function send it to the function that called it as what try does. But you'd have to handle the error. In, in theory, you could make it like this. And there's go try, 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 try. But then you're never actually processing the error. <laughs> you're basically just passing the error down, um, which kind of defeats the whole point in doing this. I'll show you this. It will run. Okay, apparently it's, it's, uh, it won't run. Um, let me see. What, is this actually working? Give me a sec. I'm actually uh, confused with what this is doing now. Integer over high return. Okay, so what this does, um, basically, so if you return it from the main function, it will just crash. Um, it will crash at runtime. If there's an error in the main function, it will crash at runtime. Uh, I believe it crashed. Yeah, so it basically, if you return an error from the main function, it will crash at runtime, um, which you probably don't want to do. In theory, you can do it, but I, it's like a massive long chain of tries if you do this. Um, so if you use try, then you'll have to deal with it in the function you call the function. Um, otherwise, it just it just leaves. It's like it goes to the function that called it, so it goes back to main. Because if I just try to run this, say error union is ignored. See, like we didn't do anything with it. And in theory, you could put catch here, and then. <laughs> but anyway, I, I normally don't use try, and I try to deal with it. You can use try, but you got to deal with it in the function that called. It. So I, what I would do is use catch as the default. Or you can just do what I was doing before, which is the the uh, the if, which is probably the easiest way to deal with it. Mm. 
<clears throat> it's probably the easiest way to deal with it. All right, let me show you another example. <clears throat> All right, so I finally finished writing this. It took me a while. God, okay. Um, so here I've created a new, the, another error called array error. And I've created a kind of massive global number array. It just goes 0 to 10. Give it 0 to 100. And it's uh, 100 length and the i32s. Okay, uh, so here we basically want to get the index and show what the the thing is. So we go to this function and we want to get whatever values at that index. Um, so we get array index, index u size has to be a u size to get the array of an uh, index, get an array, to get an index in an array you need a u size. We return an error, I haven't specified the error here. In theory I, I should be thorough and say error, array error I guess. You get array error, doesn't really change anything. I32, so if the uh, if the index is higher than the global array length, which is this 100, then we return array error, index too high. The reason why we don't check down is because the u size is 0 and above, so it can't be below. It can't, it literally can't be. Um, so then we just return whatever that's at that index. And then we, in a for loop, we're just going from 80 to 110. Constant value equals get array index, which is this function. Put in the index, which will be a u size. If it's in a for loop, it's an automatic u size. If the value is not an error, again, if the result wasn't an error, if it was an error, print the error. And the results of this are this. <clears throat> so value at, uh, so I did this before with 50 to 100. Um, as it's not inclusive, it stops at 99 and it was fine. But here, index was too high, index was too high, index was too high, index was too high. Um, all right, so that was a brief summary, uh, a brief introduction to errors. Um, so there are, I actually don't know most of them, but there are errors that can come from uh, the standard library as well. Um, I mean, you can just like, uh, I'll show them in future episodes when I uh, do some, when I look at some standard library functions. But so in summary, we have try, which basically you call a function with try. This will, if the function returns an error, return that error to the previous function. And you can, oh well, yeah, as I showed, you can have a loop all the way to main function, then it will just print the error at the end. Um, you have catch, which sets a default value if there is an error. And then you have the if brackets this thing else in brackets error so if you don't want to use this value you can actually do this if you want say if it's void for example if you're returning a void and you just want to say if whatever if result or whatever you if the result is this so this will simply say if it's an error So if it's not an error, <laughs> we're talking about if it's not an error, if it's an error. <clears throat> and this is this is basically how error checking works. You can, uh, I'll show you later, you can actually make, say you have multiple errors, you can actually go else switch and then go through all of the switch statements. Uh, what's easier for me, I mean, I don't normally use switch statements for this, um, but you can just simply print the error here, so you don't need to use a switch. But maybe you want to do something else, um, but this is a basic introduction to errors, let me know if you have any questions, and see you next time.